Well, um, hello there, internets. Uh, <clears throat> is this working? How am I to know? Well, it seems to be working. I am <clears throat> Nefente, and I am live through the copper and fiber of the interwebs uh, broadcasting from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, looking more pale in the face than usual, or red in the face, depending. Um, have a camera setting uh, thingy up. Uh, uncertain if that does any good for anyone. But, uh, well, you get what you pay for. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you get the cheap, cheap Nefente version. Um, I have actually upgraded um, hardware, so it's not exploding by uh, trying to uh, send the stream which is uh, nice and fine and i also think that it is actually streaming as it should both on youtube and facebook and um, that's a good thing already seen eric wells in the chat uh good to see you eric thanks for dropping in again uh we are not so extremely numerous but most of you seem to be back time and time again and uh, that's good because i'm back time and time again as well um uh so right now we're it's uh, monday and the date is not that it matters anymore 31st of august so we're like six months into uh this pandemic and uh, well Things are looking brutal in some places of the world. In Sweden, currently, it's it's fairly calm, uh, but there is no way of knowing where it's going. Uh, all we know is that we need to keep on keeping on. Um, hey, Patrick, good to see you too. Um, as you can see, I can actually highlight stuff here, which is fantastic. And uh, Sylvia from Catalonia, good to see you as well. Um, actually, you sent me a question on Twitter, Sylvia, regarding some soft-spoken part of the blackest breed. Um, I'm thinking, I haven't had time to answer, but I'm just curious. Do you mean the part where the child is speaking? Uh, so, uh, if so, I can try to answer what she is actually saying. If I can recall, it, it's 12 years since we made that video, but yeah, I can actually. Um, so we keep keeping on, uh, and in my case, it means working mainly from home. Though we can move about pretty freely, as most people can currently, and uh, in in the world. But I mean, we're in this shit together, and uh, my coping mechanism is trying to uh, stay relatively sane, and uh, that means uh, staying the fuck away from most uh, communication on Facebook, actually. Uh, which seems to be what's what works for me. Um, uh, it's a cesspool of uh, um, uh, opinions and uh, seems to be different things now. But uh, I, I am I'm getting more and more tired of the public discourse on on social media in general because people are so fucking hostile. Even when you speak about stuff that isn't. A matter of life and death. Uh, it seems like you you have to hit every button as hard as you can on your keyboard, and uh, to me it, that it's just um, not uh, a climate for debate and reflection that I enjoy. Uh, but I'm there sometimes still. Uh, but and uh, this is important. I have been uh, a good person, and I've stayed away from freedom from atheism and foundation for more than a week. So I'm pretty proud of myself. But when I have to go uh, full retard on people, that's normally my go-to place because at least there you're outgunned. So whatever you write, a hundred people will respond, and they will all be hostile. So it, it's a good reality check. <clears throat> uh, so Sylvia. Uh, no, no, when you kind of whisper after the shot. Oh, fuck. Hmm. Yeah, it's... Um, uh, well, uh, I have to actually check the video. <laughs> I, I, I can't fucking remember what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, that, now I think I do remember. If you guys have seen the Blackest Breed video, 
uh, it's a it's a fantastic uh, video. Now it's uh, we really had many ideas, and that's twelve years ago when we were you know not one hundred percent sure where we were going. So there are parts of that video we would do differently. Um, but there are actually a lot of like this uh, abstract whispers, and those are just abstract whispers. I actually think that would be um, uh, Bismarck actually whispering. Could also be me, but I don't think we say anything of value, at least nothing that's supposed to be possible to decipher. So if you do, please let me know. <laughs> it's been many, many years. Um, and Patrick uh, saw a discussion. Yeah, I might actually go to that discussion a bit later. If it's the same, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> and okay, uh, there are some faces here that that really do stick by. I'm so grateful, guys. It's uh, I really am. Um, this is when a Swedish person is completely enthusiastic. <laughs> no, I'm tired, uh, and I'm gonna drink this. It looks like I'm having uh, a very healthy juice mix, but actually, no, I forgot to go and buy beer, so. I raided uh, the, the cool schrank, uh, and this is Halo Sour Raspberry Lemon Sour. I got the sour part, beer, um, and I don't even like sour beer, but uh, I don't want to be thirsty, so uh, we'll we'll see. Um, so Sylvia, you actually like the video? Um, thank you, um, and this is how it is. Uh, it's not up to me. Uh, I know. I mean, we we have really progressed, uh, but we we put a lot of heart and effort into that video. And actually, we had some visual effects students that worked so hard on making a lot of that stuff happen. They are like uh, bat flocks or yeah, uh, flying around, and they had to calculate that stuff. There's so much. 3D, you can almost not see it, but everything is 3D and, and digital composing in, in that video. There is everything is green screened. So it's tons of work behind it. But as soon as you use computers and special effects, um, reality, I mean, the computers at the time can only do so good. And then, you know, everything is progressing. So whenever we use computers, things tend to look dated 10 years later. That's it's just how it is. Um, that video actually did really kickstart us and gave us a lot of uh, attention. Um, but there are some choices there that can be debated. I know Bismarck is not wearing white very often these days. <laughs> uh, I'm not wearing a super warm skirt of, uh, uh, of uh, plastic or PVC, whatever it was, either. Uh, because you die, because it's fucking warm. Um, at least I don't. I don't wear it in those circumstances, but I'll be back with that. But first, I need to sip this sour, sour, raspberry, lemon, sour, whatever. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, this is not a beer tasting pod, so that's that's fine. Any case, what I was uh, referring to, um, actually, here's the thing. Um, Underground metal is a subjective art form. Um, and actually, there are very few uh, people who know it all. So basically, what we do when we, when we approach our music is normally that we all try to get our own opinion, and then we sort of spread it. But I, I came into a discussion, not a heated one, because uh, neither of us, I guess, were really interested. but. It was a person who asked for 15 Swedish black metal albums, uh, but it could not include anything from dissection. So I wrote that, well, that, that'll be very fucking hard uh, to, uh, um, to make the top 15 albums, black metal albums from Sweden without dissection. And he answered, yeah, but it's because it's death metal. And my answer is, uh, I don't agree because I really don't think it is death metal. And then he said, well, I know better. Well, he didn't say it exactly like that. So he posted an interview that Joan Nettweit did in in between the first and the second album. So that was 94. And Joan never really 
like to say that Dissection were a black metal band, but he said it's like metal of death. But it's not really June who decides what the music is, in my opinion. I can make up my own mind, and I see it as the first two albums as melodic black metal. And Rain Chaos, I see it as more melodic, maybe more death inspired uh, metal. Um, but of course, you can also say, well, Joan decides. Sure, you can say that, but it's just an opinion. It's the artist's opinion, but it's just an opinion about the art. And times change and ideals change. And what we label black metal today could be labeled something tomorrow. And it doesn't make us wrong today, but it also doesn't matter or make the people in the future calling it something else wrong either. It's an opinion. Um, but we left that discussion. And uh, there is, uh, I like the fact that we have opinions. But I also realized that I'm sort of, I have this abstract way of, of seeing things that I can make up my own mind. And if I s think it is something, it is like that. And I can argue for that. But I can also understand that if you think you have the artist's opinion, very old opinion, but still, that, that it's also relevant. Uh, but what if he would have said it's gospel? Would it have been gospel? Of course, he would never say that, but he could potentially say it's uh, pop. And it's definitely not pop. So uh, an and artist can also change his opinion. And he's not around, so we can't ask him. But I also I, I know that was a sensitive issue for, for the dissection camp. And, and, and uh, I respect them heavily. Uh, and Jon as a musician, always. So it, uh, it it's not trying to come across as someone who doesn't respect the legacy. But in my opinion, and when I hear it, to me, it's black metal. Melodic, yet, but it's black metal, to me. Uh, but there are different opinions, and um, uh, I might be sometimes a bit academic in my approach. Uh, I realize that. Um, but I also think that the underground scene is what we all make it, and it's all our opinions uh, that combined uh, make something even black metal or death metal or over time maybe something else post black metal whatever that is um, and to some people this is a red flag and sometimes for some other people it's, it's less important and I I try to pretend labels are not important to me I just love if it's good music it's good music but I feel that I am sometimes a little bit you know I like to slap stuff on stuff except my own music because I don't want that to be labeled because I think it's very hard. Uh, I know a lot of people refer to Netherbird as black metal, but I say it's not really black metal because we have different lyrical themes. Uh, but once again, that's just my opinion. If somebody says this is melodic black metal, who am I to argue? If that's what you hear, that's what you hear. Uh, we sometimes hear it's black metal or melodic, always melodic. Black metal, some say it's mellow death, and I would say, yeah, it's, it's pieces of it. There's definitely influences from black metal, death metal, some doom metal, all of that. But uh, to me, black metal is, is something a bit harsher and a bit more sacred. Um, so, but it's, it's just, this is how it is. And I think the discussion is important, but I think it's also important that we can uh, have that uh, discussion uh, in a respectful manner. And sometimes the debate uh, climate is not always uh, so reflective. So people go, boom, this is how it is. No, that's how you think it is. And boom, this is how I think it is. Uh, it's just opinions. Except when it comes to, you know, does Spotify pay too little? Then it's not an opinion. Yeah, they really fucking pay too little. But then we can have different approaches on how much should they pay? Or is it Spotify's fault? Or is it the musicians who are lazy? And uh, if you want to have some really in-depth thoughts about that, I can warmly recommend uh, Alan from Primordial. He does uh, his um, uh, he does a pod that I heavily recommend because he has a lot of insights, both from the music industry and from his perspective as you know the founder and, and leader of uh, a pretty big band. This, mid-tier band in extreme metal and he's been doing that for many many years and he's very good at uh i think communicating his opinion and he's not so afraid to be quite honest about where he's standing uh and you should know that uh 
some of the guys um, uh, that founded Spotify, they are at least getting paid because they two of the founders sold stocks now for in Swedish uh, uh, money. One of them sold for a bit over two billion Swedish crowns and the other guy uh, a bit over one billion. And in American terms or, you know, euro terms, whatever, that would be like 200 uh, million uh, US dollars uh, and 100 million uh, US dollars, uh, respectively. So at least they they they're not walking away <laughs> uh, empty handed. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, Spotify, I mean, you can like it or not, it, 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 at least it's paying better than, you know, piracy ever did. Uh, but I, I, I think I, I would like to go deeper into the Spotify complex and why it's so damn hard for us musicians to uh, find our, our bearing when it comes to Spotify and other stuff. And also you, you need to see the cost of making an album and the revenue stream from physical sales and, and Spotify sales. And I I, uh, I think some, I read so much about people, you know, talking about this, but they seldom present exact figures. So I'm thinking if I should uh, present some exact figures, uh, why not? But in any case, uh, I will have a look now in this uh, chat also, because I am a modern uh, internet uh, uh, person. Uh, so Eric, you agree the first two were melodic black metal. Yep, that's our opinion, then we too. Um, and we have uh, Rika here. Uh, let's see. Melodic black metal rules. Yeah, I agree. El what is undebatable? And this is very important, is that uh, Somber Lane and the Storm of Light Spain are pivotal and extremely important albums. That's an objective truth. If you don't think so, you are missing out on something. Then you need to listen to them until you get it. Rain Chaos is more of a, 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 an acquired taste. It took me many years to really get it, but now I really do. Um, but I can also see and that maybe is also something I should elaborate on at some point. But when bands, you come to a certain point where you start simplifying things in order to, um, because you dare to. It's, it's a very tricky thing to make simple music. You're making all this multi-layered stuff. Um, it's actually, even though it sounds extremely complex, in many cases, it's actually easier than to you know really cook down this more simple riffs it takes a lot of courage to go there and also if you do that um, you can also uh, actually perform them uh, I wouldn't yeah it's easier to perform than live at least it's different it gives you a little bit of a different uh, flair when you can uh, when it's not as massively uh, uh, such a barrage of of 16 uh, strokes or or whatever if you like satyricon really did that journey also so it, it comes can come pretty natural but it's not always successful but there are those who really do uh, did it but it took me many years to really appreciate that journey that this section took and uh, i i was expecting or no i wasn't expecting i was just hoping for you know a third similar masterpiece but it was something else so it, that took me by surprise but i'm starting to get into it many many words from me um uh da, 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 da. i will see i found it hard to pinpoint a certain genre in other birds music i'm happy um but but truth be told it's scandinavian extreme metal for sure there but there are pin different pieces and stuff and we also evolved quite a bit uh, I think from something where there were a lot of gothic elements and stuff into it into something that is a little bit more raw now uh, I have no idea how it will sound in 10 years but I I'm pretty curious to find out so I'm, I'm sticking around to see where it's going um, can also see here that we have uh, at least one of the English uh, people online so i think that's jane could also be jane and bismarck um so i better watch myself now not to speak too much <laughs> um but uh 
I try to be brutally honest. I, of course, want everybody to love the music I'm involved in and that I make. Uh, but I also need to love it myself. And I need to love it first. Or we need to love it first. Because uh, it's a little bit like a relationship. It's really hard to find a good partner if you, if you don't like yourself. Uh, then it can be tricky. <laughs> um, and I think it's the same goes a little bit with the, the music. That you, you need to... Uh, really think it's worthwhile yourself, and then you can see if if other people can catch on. Because then you're being brutally honest somehow. Um, but I was uh, a man of many words. But it, I, I'm happy to see that you guys are in the chat and you seem alive. Uh, but feel free to ask whatever here. Uh, there is really no right or wrong. And also, it seems like the spam fuckers are not in the in the YouTube chat today. So I'm happy about that. But I, I have blocked like a billion users there. So uh, done something right. Um, I am not going to sit here uh, all by myself and talk. Uh, I seldom do. I will do that at times because sometimes it's just complicated to get the scheduling stuff to work out. Um, and I'm an extremely captivating person. So, I mean, of course, I can just sit here and talk. It would be fantastic. No, it wouldn't. But I can sometimes do it if I have something that I really want to convey, like Spotify revenue streams. I, I, I can, and I will talk about it. But today, uh, I am going to be joined uh, by a, a good friend of mine, friend from a long time ago, actually. Uh, and. To most people, she's mostly known from uh, her work in uh, Frantic Amber, but she does a lot of other cool stuff also. And I think Frantic Amber, uh, a lot of people know of them, but they have, might not have seen them live yet. Uh, but their YouTube videos are extremely, you know, have huge uh, view count. But uh, it, it's not so easy to pinpoint what Frantic Amber is about either. So, and, and to confuse you, I would show you. What I think is, is just a perfect example of uh, why Frantic Amber also really surprises their audience and me uh, by uh, you know, a very different approach. So I need to show you uh, a live uh, cover tune that they did. And hopefully this will not uh, kill my uh, stream certificates.
Hey. <laughs> Hello. Hey, listen. How are you? I'm good. <sighs> and you are in Denmark. Yes, Denmark. Yes. Denmark. Denmark. Can I hear your best Danish, please? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my, you know, my Danish, it's, uh, um, it's <laughs> yes, uh, it's, it's great. Uh, good to see you. Uh, did you become the pixel lady or did you actually manage to hook your uh, Android thingy? This is my Android thingy. So huh? <laughs> the last 20 minutes have been like, oh, shit, okay, let's try this. Okay. So it worked actually. Thank you for the tip. I have uh, the Droid Cam going, and it's much, much better than my uh, webcam, which is, yeah, Pixel Lady. So yeah. I think this is quite good. Yeah, yeah. But you are like, uh, uh, first off, uh, uh, hello, Elizabeth, and welcome to my fantastic pod. And uh, it's, it's been, you should have been here a long time ago, but I mean, planning wise and stuff wise, and but now you're here, which is good for me. Um, yay. yay. Uh, and I know you since forever. Uh, first time we gigged together in 2011. I think that was the first time, right, in Gothenburg. Yeah, probably. I don't exactly I mean, We also played something in Stockholm, like way back, the yeah, Rock Q or something. No, we, in then, Uppsala, actually. Yes, where we <laughs> the fucking as well. <laughs> the glory of Korea. Yes, that was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> but it was uh, Roskilde. How do you say that in, the, in English? Roskilde Festival. Uh, yeah, Roskilde. Roskilde. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we we hung out there. That, that was, yeah, I mean, we got to know each other there, and it, it's been a fucking decade. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, in the beginning of Frantic Amber, so I think we've been knowing each other for 10 years, yeah. Oh, where's my beer? Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> Amateur. Yeah, but, that's uh, a fucking long time. You're young. You'll learn that you know you never <laughs> go on uh, an Aventus pod without beers. But uh, you, you'll be covered next time. Yeah. But actually, um, it is uh, so cool to to have you here. And uh, I am I'm biased as fuck because you're my friend. But uh, I, I think uh, I've always been you know captivated by the, you, you do so many different things and. People don't know it. We'll talk about you. I mean, you don't only do brutal music, but uh, with Frantic, you you guys have been doing this. Can you just talk me, tell me, uh, like I'm a five year old, uh, how Frant how you came to start in Frantic Amber? I mean, it's it's a long time ago now. Yeah. So I've been playing with Frantic Amber for ten years, also, <laughs> and. Um... It's my first original band that, uh, so I, I studied music when I lived at home in Denmark. I started with piano and the saxophone and some singing and I was doing our orchestra and Did you play saxophone? Yeah, yeah. I can still play, I guess. No, I please don't. To. Please don't. <laughs> you hate saxophone, I know. I fucking hate saxophones. Um, what is the most sexy instrument ever? The tenor saxophone, come on. I said saxophone. I mean, you're my friend, and I, I, I love you and all, but there, there are limits. Um, little did I know that also uh, uh, the label boss, I, I'm working with Eisenwald, and uh, I think as a joke, he sent me uh, a very extreme saxophone promo <laughs> to listen to. And I was like, what the fuck? I, 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 I mean, I, I, I don't like this instrument. I don't even know if it's good music or not. I, I just can't fucking get into it. But okay, fine. Some people like saxophone. I get that. Uh, you yeah. can play with Isham one day, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. But anyways, you started with uh, several instruments and stuff. Yes. So I was trained first in classical and then in some jazz and popular music and all this. And it was later I got into metal and stuff, but uh, it was first when I had moved to Sweden, uh, like short time before I joined Friends of Camber that I was starting to, um... oh, there's coming some comments. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> That Sorry. I started to uh, experiment with the uh, more extreme vocals because I was listening to all this music and I wanted to sing along because I did that a lot, a lot, a lot. 
I uh, was singing along to anything and everything I was listening to. And well, of course, I wanted to also sing along to the heavier stuff. And one day I just tried it. <laughs> and I was listening to Opeth, which is, you know, a good mixture of uh, very nice and melodic and clean singing. And then it goes over to brutal screaming. And I was singing all the clean passages and I wanted to also join the screaming. So I did that someday and I was like, holy shit. I yeah. can totally do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can totally do it. And, yeah, and but then, you know, it took it some a time, a, a while to to get a technique and to, to to do it for longer time and all this. So it's a it's a it's a process, as you know, as a vocalist, like uh you start somewhere and then you go and you get improve and improve. And um yeah, I found Francie Gamber not like during that was during my second year of ballet school. So I went to Sweden, I'm from Denmark. And I went to Sweden to study ballet at the Royal Swedish Ballet School. And we'll get more I, into the ballet because uh, it's it's I'm super curious. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's like I was I stopped uh, all music uh, to go like to go really serious into the dancing. And I was living in Germany for one year as well at a school down ballet school down in southern Germany. And then I was really missing music like playing music and, and expressing myself through music, which I used to do. So I was starting to looking for bands and uh, yeah, that was uh, the second year of ballet school. And I found uh, Maria had an ad on band finder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great page. <laughs> well, I don't know if it still exists, but it, no, it, it, no ID. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, but I just found an ad looking for for female singers to join her band, and and she wanted to play music with other other females. So yeah, we we met up. We emailed a bit and met up and did some demo stuff. And yeah, so uh, that's kind of like <laughs> a longer story, I guess. But no, we started but in 2010, and then yeah. And then you were you were uh, uh, five females, and now you're four females and a guy on drums. Actually, now we are five females. And you are because you have three guitarists, of course. I yeah. mean, uh, the more the merrier. Uh, exactly. But you, uh, I am. Uh, I've always been extremely impressed with your live performances because you you always you bulldoze or over most bands actually when you go up and do your stuff because people have. Uh, an, an idea that you know uh, you're chicks and you will not be more brutal, but you 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 are more brutal than ninety five percent of the guys. And I mean, you know it, <laughs> uh, and you do hammer smashed face because you can. Uh, and I think it's 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 really cool. But also your own stuff that you make. You have two albums out now. Um, yes. Uh, and an EP. <laughs> what? And an EP. And an EP. Yeah. Totally true. counts. If you ask me, anyways. <laughs> well, you know, um, but uh, you really you go more and more towards the brutal. I think not not the melodic. Uh, so it's an interesting. I mean, you don't you don't commercialize the stuff. That's that's for sure. Well, not yet. <laughs> huh. No, uh, the thing is, uh, well, of course, we're new members. We have uh, two, uh, three, four new members now <laughs> from since the first album. Mm. So of course we are influenced uh, by the new people and we're also influenced by our own involvement of music and taste and whatever, like, and, and what we wanted to express. And uh, yeah, it's, it's gone towards the brutal side. Yeah. Uh, more, more brutal than the first album, definitely. But we really make sure to keep some melodic elements and like keep the elements that makes it melodic death metal but it's definitely uh going towards the harder side of it <laughs> brutal is better yes yeah, she is damaged <laughs> by the way if you think it makes ah, sense uh, yeah nice hi <laughs> um yeah but it, and, and i mean at this you know how are you coping through the the you know the fucking covid stuff uh how, how is it in Denmark and uh just you know, tell tell me how do you pass the time? Because you're obviously not out playing live. No, we're not at the moment. Um, yeah, the whole country closed down for quite some time. 
uh, it's just uh, opened a bit, quite a bit since uh, yeah the last month maybe, but not to the next stage yet where we get to go to concerts and stuff. Everything is uh, with rules and sitting down. And there have been a few concerts I've seen um, being held, but small uh, like scale of people and of course sitting down in groups uh, of households and whatnot. So it's, uh, yeah. It's a bit sad, of course, to have to postpone everything we had planned for this summer. Mm. We were really looking forward to, to to do it and go on stage and all these things. Of course, uh, we actually just kind of got home from tour uh, in February and a few weeks later, it's like total lockdown. <laughs> so yeah. it was surreal. Um, I guess like I, I took it quite well because uh, everything just kind of stopped. And I got to have some time to reflect and actually stop because I'm a bulldozer. I don't stop. <laughs> like um, so, I I could feel when I actually stopped and everything was canceled. I even got sent home from work for like uh, a, a while, a, a long while. Um, yeah, so I was uh, using the time to to rehab, to just stop and take care of my health and uh pains that ailed me and all these things that i didn't have really time or didn't couldn't didn't make time for before because the ship was going you know yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that was really an eye-opener for me and it was very helpful and healthy for me to to actually use that time to stop and just breathe and rehab and do other things and relax like like Doing nothing is an art. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a really an acquired art also because, I, I mean, I'm not very good at that either. I'm, I, I'm not the most, you know, when I stop, I, I, I hate everything. So I, I need to be constantly moving because I, I mean, otherwise my demons catch me. Uh, yeah. But now, that, <laughs> now I have no escape, so they had to fucking catch me. I had to learn to, you know, coexist with them. And it's so for me, yeah. it's, this has been actually some of my best months mentally because I really had to, you know, deal with a lot of shit, not run off to the gym and, you know, just sweat it away or go to work and just, you know, drown myself in that. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's been really, really tough. But in the end, I, I feel like a winner, actually. It's uh, yeah. weird. But... Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to see actually what happens when everything stops and it's not a choice that you made yourself but it's a very healthy choice that was made for you. Or it can be, it can be very yeah. healthy. It depends on, of course, which kind of person you are and how you react to these things. Uh, like I'm, I'm quite introverted normally and I like to be at home and inside and do all my projects here at home or like when I, when I really relax and don't have anything really to do, I play a lot of video games and just having time for that and relaxing, doing something else than I mm. normally do really gave me space and, and also just meditating doing yoga and yeah taking care of <laughs> everything it's been very peaceful um also of course it's stressful not knowing what's going on really or of course. and it's kind of like it's uh, day, week by week and that's stressful because it's nice to know where you're headed where your life is going yeah but, living yeah. in limbo it's 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 really, really, that's, I think, the taxing. Because if somebody said, you know, well, October 1st, it will be over. Yeah. Then, then you, and then it's easy. Now yeah. it's just, we don't know how bad it is. We don't know for how long this is. Uh, so living with that uncertainty has been, uh, it is challenging. But uh, mm. I think also, maybe we need to learn that, you know, a lot of things are uncertain. So we just, you know, need to make every day okay, instead of, you know, always focusing Oh, when yeah. I go on tour and we release this album, whatever. Uh, instead, you know, yeah, how can I make a Tuesday decent? Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, can, I can make a cup of coffee and I can go out on my balcony and smoke a cigarette, which I'm still allowed to do in Sweden. But there are now papers mm -hmm. in my elevator that says that people might be offended. Oh, yeah, well, fuck so them. <laughs> can you smoke on your balcony? Okay. No, oh, well, you know, they say it's illegal ah. for now, in parentheses. 
yeah. and I was like, yeah, until it's very illegal or until I stop, I'm going to do that because I, I paid a, 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 a little sack of money for this place. So I'm sorry <laughs> if you're offended, dear neighbor, but welcome <laughs> to Sweden. We write notes in the, in the you know, <laughs> in the elevator. <laughs> Yeah, we don't like confrontation. I, I, I don't know. I'm Swedish at that point. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, we all are. But uh, the the Frantic Amber journey has taken you guys uh, on, on. I mean, you've done a lot of live shows uh, and, and you yeah. it took you to vacuum. Yes. Was that, that like, yeah, was the, the, the most epic moment of your career so far or how hard That's to hard say. to say. Yeah, because yeah. there's been so many epic moments and, and experiences and also going on the longer tours and mm -hmm. like, there's just so much there and, and the people are different every time and it's like you, you get to meet a lot of different people and situations and places and so it's, uh, it's all a treat and it's all challenging of course. And um, yeah, I remember back in with great, of course, uh, affection and like it was a huge moment for us to go on like a big stage with thousands of people. A tent was full to the brink, so it was amazing. And just having our hard time slot, and um, yeah, I, I had a party anyways. <laughs> and uh, people were like so happy. So yeah, that was really great. And all the rehearsals really pay off because you guys are extremely well rehearsed live. I mean, I saw you on this gala in sweden the p3 gold and that was in 2012 2013 something yeah. and, and already then you were i mean you guys always been really professional with the live performance not uh, i am too lazy to be that good uh, i think <laughs> i mean i beat everyone you know with you know i at least i'm a bit tall <laughs> that's you know that's what i bring to the stage uh <laughs> Oh, no, you uh, just see me in my heels, man. I was <laughs> no, in all seriousness, uh, uh, but uh, you are really a well-rehearsed machine when you guys hit the stage, and and it, it, it doesn't happen by itself. But I have to. Uh, is it okay if I show some photos from your other aspects of your career? Because I mean, this is the uh, the Lissy we we all know. Because uh, this is like uh, yeah. brutal thing. Yeah, brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal, uh, brutal girl. Uh, uh, but I think some of your fucking stage antics uh, come from, and here we go. Dun, this, is, dun, dun. <laughs> this is also you. Yes. Uh, um. And uh, uh, I mean, I can do that. That's not a problem. But yeah, uh, any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure I could do this. Actually, is it? A, can I play it? Yes, of course. If it lets you. Oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, there's music too. Yay. <laughs> and I can't fucking lower the volume, can I? No. I can. Enjoy it. Take it all in. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you can, you can do this. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, I haven't been on point for quite a while, but yeah, I'm schooled in classical ballet, but I also yes. dance a lot of contemporary and jazz and modern stuff. Mm. Like, I like to mix, actually, that's my favorite. But I have a soft part for the classics. I really enjoy it. And I have to, I have to admit, uh, I, I really love the ballet. Uh, I go as often as I can. Uh, which isn't very often, but still, uh, I do it because I think it's, it's it's a really, really fantastic art form. Uh, it's not for everyone. I get that, and I mean, uh, but but uh, but I really think it's it's awesome. But how much of all that training? Because you don't get to to do that unless you train hard. No, no, <laughs> it's like hard work every day, six days a week at least six hours a day, maybe more with rehearsals and everything. It was, yeah, it's tough on the body. <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, it, it's, a, it's a heavy price to pay. Um, and I got, I, I had to do other things as well because I have so many interests. So this yeah. is 
Like after also after ballet school, I was trying to do a balance uh, dance career and music career, and also I had to pay my bills because you know artist stuff doesn't pay very well, <laughs> especially not starting out. So it was uh, really challenging for a while. Mm. Um, but then I, yeah, I, I chose to go back to school and become a programmer. So I had something to support myself, and that's what I do. I support my all my I'm a crazy ideas with this and. Uh, so I still I still dance, um, but not on that level. Obviously, mm. you have to. That that's like to do ballet and classical ballet, and on that level, you need to go to the studio every day. Yeah. Um, but I I have so many plans for projects and like mixtures, and I want to do all these things, and I hope someday I will manage to have the time and 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 funds and energy to do what I have in mind. But uh, yeah, it's definitely. It's not something I just threw out and like, next, you know, it's like such a big part of me and who I am and how I work also as a musician and as a, anything really, like it's like the mindset is very much uh, from there and the discipline mm. and how I, my, my, my way of working, it's very, yeah, disciplined and structured, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I mean, so, I mean, rehearsing with your band often is not a problem if you're used to rehearse six hours a day for six uh, six days a week. I mean, then <laughs> doing being a disciplined metal musician is, is it's, it's a breeze in comparison. It's a bit less maybe rehearsal hours, but that's also when I was a full time dancer. So yeah, well, yeah, so <laughs> really, but still, kind of work. Yeah, it's that's just reality. But definitely, it's another kind of work, and it's also. It's another kind of expression yeah. and like I have, I, I don't know exactly. I'm still trying to figure out <laughs> what I'm all about and how to do things uh, in, a, in, a, in a manner that makes sense because uh, I have so much mixed inside of me that I want to like, I, I, I want to express myself on so many levels and so many medias that there are only 24 hours a day and only so much energy to to spend so i'm trying to to yeah get to plan better and 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 have one project at a time and stuff because i have of course frantic amber is a project in itself and it takes a lot of my time and effort of course and then a part like the other time goes to whatever i can fit in with my other projects with modeling or dancing or just filming some stuff or doing covers i also rehearse other things to expand my uh, repertoire <laughs> so yeah it's it's a balance of um ma managing uh, all the balls in the air i guess yeah um how, how much because i mean you are used to being on a stage and i mean Obviously, by doing ballet, you have a pretty good sort of feeling on how to move, and uh, you know yeah. you're pretty good at finding your balance and, and, and stuff like that. And how how much of a uh, uh, an asset is that to you when you do uh, your live performance with, I mean, your extreme metal band? It's a very good perk, I think. <laughs> I, I don't know how it is without it, but I can say for me, I'm very happy because like I, it like the stage is uh, both home but also terrifying, and mm. it was also like that when I was dancing. Maybe even more so because that was on point. <laughs> yeah, well, it's really hard. You know what I mean? And, and but it's like I want to do it anyways. You know, so. Um, and I, I have this need to to get on stage, so I still do that. And um, it's just another format. And of course, having uh, control over my body or knowing my body very well and how I move and, and finding my balance and everything, it gives me more freedom on stage. And also I have stamina and the, like the coordination and all the other things, like physical things that I pair with my um, technique, my vocal things. So that's why you see me headbanging while singing and like using quite a lot of physical energy on stage. And it definitely comes from that. Like I'm used to being there physical and expressing with big motions and mm. yeah, all these things. So I think it's been a strength for me, definitely. It is um, definitely. Uh, I, I... I, my ballet is not top notch anymore. Uh, <laughs> it used to be, but actually, but, no. <laughs> uh, uh, but actually, I remember a photo shoot that I did. 
where I was working with a camera guy who's really, you know, good. Hello, Daniel. Um, but he had a friend there, Ben, who's a uh, ballet dancer, and he couldn't stand it when I was, you know, slouching or stuff. So he went up there and being a ballet guy, he is fucking physical. So he's just, you. this is the happy spot. Push it out. It's not that. Heavy. And it's like those photos came out really in a way that wasn't possible without somebody physically, you know, manhandling me to, to you know, fucking. <laughs> and because yeah. there's so much stuff there. And also on the stage, this is uh, most of us, I mean, Scandinavians, we we think we do, you know, I do a big gesture, but no, it's, it's you can't see we, the, the, my first performances, you know, I try to, uh, it, you have to over-exaggerate everything in order to make it count from the stage. And yeah. of course, a ballet teacher knows this. Uh, they yeah. know how it, how you're supposed to, you know, convince people from a stage. So you, yeah. I think a lot of that stuff, you learned it through the ballet. Yeah. That's true, and and like how to manage yourself on stage, because like obviously you're nervous and you're shaking, and and all these things are going through. Like it's it's normal. Like uh, I don't think I've ever gone on stage and not being nervous. Sometimes I'm really nervous. Like oh, I don't want to go on, and other times yeah. it's like okay, I'm nervous, but you know I'm pumped. I can do this. Like I know I can do it. So it's very like mood of the day. That's yeah. a human uh, aspect of it. But then I have my tools, I guess you would call them. Like, I know I can still uh, put on a really great show even though I feel shitty. So that's show business. That's what it's all about is putting on the, yeah, the show for people. So they, they enjoy it and they can see the best side of the best you can bring, of course, that day. But it's like, it's like a kind of fake it till you make it aspect. Yeah. It's like, even though in ballet, for example, you, you can be hurting and your muscles are just so tired, but you still have to go on stage and be like, da, 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 you know, so, which is not, it's very hard. Um, so it's, it's also, I guess, yeah, that's, that's a thing. Don't, like you can, you can be something on the outside, cool, calm, yeah, everything, yeah. but on the inside still be nervous and shaking. And, and of course you, I'm, I, tr I try to anyways be trained and, and to emote my insides or whatever to like, yeah, yeah. like project. yeah, project big, as you say, everything big. And that's from how you move uh, to, to, yeah, how you speak and how you stand. And like, there's a lot of, of that. Yeah, of course, that, that I get from dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah, because I have to fight a bit against you know every instinct that I have because I, I I'm I'm a fairly big you know tall and stuff so I, I'm 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 used to you know taking a room no problem but taking a stage is a completely different thing and you have to look you know, really overdo everything in order not to look timid it's like yeah exactly. <laughs> You know, you can only do that if you're fucking Ossie Osborne. Then you can <laughs> do whatever. <laughs> but the rest of us, we have to be a little bit, uh, you know, more than that. But and I, I, I always put on this here. Da, 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 da. Nice to see ladies in the extreme arts performing. So much inspirational for me and idealistic preservers to keep going on. Yes, Gekke. Uh, Gekke is uh, uh, based in Turkey. But this, this, uh, I have. Uh, I've researched, I have scientifically approached ladies in uh, metal. I don't, I'm not going to make this a gender talk because uh, I'm sure you had a million of them. But yeah. <laughs> uh, there are too few girls playing. Uh, and I, I, I actually wanted to know how, how, how many girls are doing this. And it's 3.7% of the people at uh, metal archives are female, the rest okay. are girls. So it's low. It's too low. I mean, it's it, lower than I thought, actually. Yeah, wow. It's super low because uh, it's a little bit better, I think, in extreme metal than in heavy metal, for instance. Or, you know, there is a lot of subgenres, but we are doing a shitty job when it comes to getting more ch chicks playing because uh, I, I, I talked to a, a, a person working with, uh, you know, uh, youth uh, music and he said, or she said, it doesn't matter. 
the person said that it's not a problem to get girls to start playing. The problem is they quit much earlier than the guys. They get other interests. Uh, so when they leave, you know, the ninth grade, they 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 hang up the guitar. They're too smart to keep on doing that. So they keep doing other stuff instead. But uh, so it's just the guys that keep on going, and very few return to the music later on. And that we need to be better at that because. It should be 50-50 because everybody benefits from that because it means more good musicians. Um, yeah, of course. Pushing out half of the good musicians almost. So that sucks. Um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, like, <laughs> what to do? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I just did it because I wanted to. I wanted yeah. to so bad. <laughs> and I think we need more more people who, who just do it. And I. And also, it's not up to you guys to fix that, because I think it's up to everyone. I mean, it's the 96.3% that also needs to think on why are we so fucking bad at getting more, you know, uh, people doing this? And it's bad in the audience. There is maybe 80, 20 or something. It should also be more. But so but it could be because there are, you know, few inspirations. So we, we need to be better at that, I think. But. At the same time, I'm super, super tired of this, uh, you know, female fronted, whatever. Uh, I mean, we're just people doing extreme metal, but it should be more people doing extreme metal. Uh, and hopefully, you know, 50 50 would be pretty nice because it would be better, more fun after parties anyway. So <laughs> I think yeah. so. More balance, uh, maybe. <laughs> I saw so, uh, so many after parties, you know, where it's just men in yeah. leather vests discussing Saxon <laughs> so we can discuss something else also uh, but in any case I think it's awesome but uh, I there are more stuff that you do because uh, you you're doing I mean you have the dancing background and you do 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 frantic and other we actually played some black metal together at some gig that nobody but we have to in the future also. But uh, no, we have to do a, 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 a what's it called iteration one more time. Yeah, <laughs> we need to. We need to. Uh, yeah, actually, I I do some black metal on the side just myself. Like I mm -hmm. have a, a silly project, but it's not out yet because again, it's not something I have so much time for. I have a lot of raw material that I haven't. Uh, finished yet and stuff like this, but I really hope to actually put it out there someday. Um, and I, I, black metal is one of my favorite genres. I really adore the music, so I hope to contribute to it someday <laughs> in a more sound way. Um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, also, be fun to just do some covers, man. Yeah, we should. Uh, and and. Uh... We said that we should do a duet at some point. We should do it at least yeah. five, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, years later, we have time. We're not dead yet. <laughs> and I don't plan on dying very soon. Uh, I will die before you, so uh, we'll have to, you know, we'll have to mind that deadline. But yeah, uh, yeah. but still. Um, but you also explore other, uh, uh, you know, aspects of creativity. I uh, because you you also do. I mean, you do modeling, but your modeling is is uh, pretty, you know, dark, gloomy stuff. Uh, I will just show. Some. Uh, here is one photo, and I think the photographer is it Jade that took this one. Yes, Jade Hart. Me and Ina also had some photos together. We were in the forest, just in uh, yeah, north of Stockholm, taking some photos and. Uh, <laughs> People passing by on the bicycle path, like what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's modeling, but it's more this dark art modeling uh, yeah. thing. Uh, I, you also I just say alternative modeling because it's like I do a range of things. I love love the darkness and like yeah, exactly. I also love latex and PVC and mixing. So as you can see, the ballerina. I'm wearing a latex leotard and my old tutu uh, and a, a different kind of point shoes. <laughs> a little bit different, uh, a bit but different. but uh, yeah, I really enjoy that. Uh, and. I also think because I mean we we sometimes frequent the same parties not often enough but we do uh, and exactly. people you know think oh fetish uh, parties that's you know they think of a cellar and you know 
fat people sitting there and being, you know, way too naked and awkward. Uh, but it, it's not necessarily how it is actually. So I'm no. going to show. I'm going to show you because you catwalked on uh, Avant Gardista, a really, really nice party in Germany that we yeah. hope is coming back. Uh, and just to give a glimpse into what that. That, that means because uh, it's it's uh, slightly it's different. Fashion, than baby, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> fashion is what it is. Yeah. And uh, let's see if I can get it to work. My connection sucks today. It's so fun. I oh, switch yeah. a computer, but then connection dies. Dun dun dun. Try again. Oh. Coming. This video contains content from products. It's not available in the country. Bullshit. <laughs> ah. Did it go to hell? I think so. But I sent you the MP4. Maybe that will work. Just directly play it off your computer. Ah, but you're in Denmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, it's it's gonna work on the stream. Actually, it's uh, the Danish oh, uh, it's on me. <laughs> Danish uh, uh, stuff seems to be. But in any case, it was you uh, catwalking on uh, Avantgardista, uh, which is you know. Uh, latex fashion shows, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's it's that is also a really, but it's fairly new for you to explore that expression, right? Yeah, doing uh, like uh, it's like I, I like the dark style, and uh, for me, it's all about fashion and the expression. So um, that was the first, like, yeah, what you would call a fetish event, but for me, it's just a fashion event that's yeah. like cool fashion like i love the artistry behind what these creators do um and yeah so i've also done like alternative fashion shows before but it's like a non-mainstream you can say uh mm -hmm. and like rock and like cool cool uh, clothes if because it's like i do i do that also for for my pleasure i'm not a commercial model uh at least not yet um don't know if I want to be, but you know, I like <laughs> to be the master of my own universe. So I choose the projects I want to do. I actually, most of them, I do the concepts as well. So it's my clothes, my concepts, my ideas, and I do a collaboration with a photographer or just do it myself also sometimes. So it depends. Other times it's a collaboration or some someone else's idea or um, like if uh, yeah, that they want to express something through me, and I, when I, I agree, I want to do like, oh, that sounds amazing idea. Then I, I gladly am that instrument. So it's, it depends on what it is, but it's like, it's a, it's very freeing to be able to be the one that decides what I do and don't do, uh, and I have very clear rules for what I want to and what do, what I don't do. So it's like, yeah, it's just uh, trying to navigate that space and and being a. Uh, yeah, I guess like I'm I'm trying to find a word for all these things that I do, but I just like I'm an artist, I guess. It's like quite broad and vague word, but it's something to do with creative creativity. Mm -hmm. And uh I like to mix all these things together in some way or a little way or not at all. So it's like it's an it's another way to express myself. Yeah. <laughs> Darkness I have in my soul. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, uh, and I mean, I, I am so fed up with this. What we can do and can't do when you do extreme metal, for instance. Oh, you you can like classical music, but you can't like jazz. Uh, uh, I mean, all of these. For being the music, you know, a freedom craving music for the individual. We're still, we're so fucking afraid, you know, what is possible to combine or whatnot. I think it's, it feels really old fashioned. And I think for me, that is really off putting because we can be whoever the fuck we want to be. Uh, as long as you're comfortable doing whatever you do, you should absolutely yeah. be doing it. And uh, uh, there is, time for regrets when we die i'm sure there are shit we will regret but i think mostly the stuff we didn't do so uh and, and i mean try everything uh, as long as it's comfortable and you know people are you know respectful and stuff and i think in the alternative you know the fetish or the the, the, the alternative fashion the respect level is extremely high you seldom yeah, meet 
disrespectful people on these parties because yeah. you, and people are you know, behaving really uh, uh, nice and they're also maybe not pissed drunk all the time which can be the case when you're on tour and you hang on an after party there can be pissed drunk uh, in completely different way yeah it's also hard to be pissed drunk wearing like heels like this covered in latex and like looking really fly but you know it's not the most practical outfit maybe <laughs> no uh and yeah uh, you can fucking die from you know falling in it but yes. uh, uh I, I i to me that's i mean i think your take on the stuff that you do is really refreshing because you 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 constantly evolve in your expression i think and i think uh, everything benefits from it uh i mean you couldn't be the artist you are in front of Gamber without the dancing. I don't think you could possibly be perhaps the model that you are without, you know, the extreme metal influences. And I mean, you mold that stuff and you build on it. And I think that is how we progress and, you know, move forward as people. If As long as we have the energy to, you know, try stuff and, you know, yeah. dare to be doing a little bit, you know, new stuff. It's not so bad. Yeah. And daring to be different and <laughs> doing what you want instead of what other people want. It's like also something I'm embracing more and more and realizing more and more. It's like, because like, I've been told a lot of times through my uh, years, oh, I'm so old. No, <laughs> through my life was what I was trying to say. Uh, that, 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 oh, no, you, you can't be uh, all these things at the same time. You have to choose. You have to choose. You have to choose. And I hate that works. <laughs> I'm not very good at choosing otherwise. So it's like something maybe from that. I don't know. I ah, I want to do everything. But obviously, I choose in some aspects. But I mean, it's just uh, they can go hand in hand. And what I use my time and effort on is what I choose to. So I'm, I'm realizing and also embracing and living more and more by this that it's not what the other people think and want and uh, have persuaded me through the years about this or that is uh, the right way to do or whatever. It's like, no, you know what? I can do it all. Not at the same time because there are still only 24 hours in a day, but I can still do uh on whatever level I can muster and I can still like choose how I want to um, make my projects and, and in what way. And like, cause I get so inspired and I get so much joy from doing it. Like when I, I design my costumes, like uh, I, I don't, that's not, that's not like, it's just something I do extra behind the scenes or I put on uh, like try different looks or makeup or sew stuff or combine, you know, so it's like a whole process behind a photo shoot, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The concept, like I like concepts and I like putting together a, a, a theme or, or something like, yeah, I want to show this. <laughs> so yeah, and that can be done in so many ways. And I just feel like I have so many outlets and so many ways to say or show or just express like feelings or concepts or just, whatever i want you know through either music or modeling like photos or videos i plan to do some more videos i also have one that's coming up i think pretty soon <laughs> where i also dance and it's very dark so it's uh trying to mix all the things that make me me into my mm -hmm. art and not exclude anything because i think or that's what I perceived. What that's uh, what other people have told me before. Mm. Like screw that, man! <laughs> yeah. I want to do it all, like in my way, in my effort, in my you know. So it's it's fun to see, but it, and it's scary. It's uh, it's it's kind of new to think this way. So it's like a process. Uh, some days I feel like very strong in this, and other days it's like feeling a bit unsure maybe but that's just human factor you know yeah, 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 yeah. except not being a hundred every day all the time and that's okay <laughs> it's, it's very very it's gonna be like that and i when i feel yeah. you know uh, deterred by stuff i always think that you know david bowie this icon of icons he had terrible stage fright terrible terrible stage fright and but he, he 
decided to do it anyway, and we should be pretty grateful he did. And yeah. also, I mean, you can't say that David Bowie was just a, you know, a vocalist. I mean, he was an artist in the true sense of the word, you know, exploring visual aspects, uh, image aspects or whatever. I mean, we don't have to be David Bowie, but we can be not so fucking afraid of the rules, especially if we do like extreme metal, which to me is about the full freedom. Uh, I mean, the yeah. full defiance of rules and norms. And then we're stuck with new norms. No, you can't yeah. do it. You you can't have you know whatever. You need patches on your jacket, whatever. I mean, yes, if you want that, sure, go ahead. No one is stopping you. But I mean, you should also be uh, fully able and supported when trying different shit. Uh, mm. Or if you're not supported, fuck that and do it anyway. Because life is too short to worry it away i think and we will regret everything we didn't do and regret very few things we did i'm, I'm sure of that yeah hopefully <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see we'll otherwise see. Uh, we'll sit here in a, in a year and drink wine and regret everything but then so be it then we learned something uh so that, that's that's true. That's also um, something, <laughs> trying to learn from the things we didn't like. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, uh, life is, nobody told us when growing up, I mean, life is, it's not getting easier and easier. It's fucking more and more complex every year. Uh, so I have full respect for you know, old people. They, they've, they've dealt with a lot of shit to get <laughs> where they are. It's not so yeah. easy as it seems. Uh, mm -hmm. But also, yeah, I mean, there are high ups and downs and shit. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm, I'm totally happy that you uh, went on here. And I think uh, you, you, you're you always a pleasure just, you know, to, to hang around with. And you know that. And uh, uh, this is uh, <laughs> um, But uh, before we go, I, I will I will take this copyright fucking risk and uh, put on uh, Yoshitai. Uh, uh, lyric video that you guys did for uh from uh, your second and fairly recent album yes uh, can you say anything about the song before i push play sure so it's uh from our concept album bellatrix and uh, it's about the japanese uh samurai uh, in the 1800s she is called nakano takeko i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right but she I, uh, that was Really good, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. Anyway, she was a, a samurai in, and she was the leader of an all female army. And that is what Yoshitai means. It means female army in Japanese. And she was fucking badass. Uh, when she got shot on the battlefield and felt she was dying, she said to her sister, that Cut my head off and take, me, take it with you and bury it somewhere so they can't brutalize it after as a trophy, you know? And that's what happened. So her sister decapitated her <laughs> and it was buried somewhere and it's a temple today and everything. So it's like a pretty brutal story. So of course I had to write about it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and the music is also influenced by a lot of Japanese elements and instruments like in the, in the samples and everything. So, and a fun fact about the video is recorded uh, in our living room in Stockholm uh with green screen and me uh singing the song so it's a quite simple format but very powerful i'm really happy with how it turned out cool and uh i will put it on uh i wish you all the best and uh i hope we meet soon either here in yeah. stockholm or in copenhagen whatever happens first uh yeah. take care and uh, stay safe wash your hands and uh <laughs> yeah yes exactly. you too Thank you so um, much for having me. It was a pleasure. Always. Yeah. See ya. See you. See if I can manage to make this work. Uh.